the number one attendance in the country. The crew is ready for number one Maryland, number eight Michigan. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Sasha Sarosky's Maryland Terrapins. Well, we've got a real solid defensive four in the back. Two six foot five guys in Pines and Cronali. And Cody Niedermeyer, what a season for him between the pipes for Maryland. Don't forget about Gordon Wild, leading goal scorer in the conference. Shaka Daly's Michigan Wolverines beat Rutgers two to one yesterday. And he'll change up his starting lineup today. Yeah, he'll sit with a couple of uh, defensive midfielders in Brett Nason and Tyler Anderson. Nason has been a workhorse for Michigan throughout the season. Francis Atuahani running up top with the support from Mertz and Hallahan. That's where the attack comes from. Chris, what a thriller we had on the Big Ten Network last week. It took two overtimes before we found a winner. Yeah, really exciting last week. The opportunity with the handball here. Now Michigan's already up 2-0 and Gordon Wild plants the penalty kick in the goal. Now it's 2-1, still in favor of the home team. Can Michigan knock off the number one team in the country? Not when you start to get service like that inside 2-2 with just a minute left in regulation. We go to overtime, Dino. Gordon Wild inside, looks for the opportunity. And Suli Danka scores his first goal in his career for Maryland last week to give the Terps that 3-2 victory, but more importantly for the team, the undefeated season. We would talk to Suli Danka afterwards, and he told me this week here in College Park that was the first interview on television he had done in his career, an up and down career that is finishing strong for number five. Yeah, he's just terrific from the outside. He works his way up the flank, gets involved in possession, gets involved in service across the back. All right, the Michigan Wolverines in their Michigan Blues. The Maryland Terrapins in their home whites, and we are underway with just one spot remaining for next week's Big Ten Final Four at Grand Park in Indianapolis. Semi-final Friday and championship Sunday also on the Big Ten Network. Two, three, and four are in Indiana, Wisconsin, and Michigan State. And all of the quarterfinals today, Dean, were played under the same weather conditions we see here this afternoon in Maryland clear sky, sunshine, and just really pleasant for early November. Look at this weather. Are you kidding me? 66 degrees, sunny, splendid. They were wearing short sleeves up in East Lansing for the game this afternoon between Michigan State and Penn State. Plenty of short sleeves here as well. Jack Hallahan to, uh, to a Henny. Donovan Pines gets the start for Maryland. As Andrew Samuels, who had taken over for Diego Silva, left back. Both Samuels and Silva a little bit banged up. So they slide Sule Danka over, and the big freshman, Donovan Pine, steps in. So they'll go 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five <laughs> with Cronalli and Pines. And the basketball staff is wondering how they lost out on Cronalli and Pines. <laughs> Pretty good basketball team here as well. There's Evo Serta. Dean, let's talk a little bit about what Michigan's up against. They had that game yesterday. They've got to conserve energy. One of the ways you do that is you possess the ball and you force the opposing team to chase. Now, of course, Maryland is willing to chase and apply high pressure, too. So you've got to be safe with your possession, and you've got to be moving. Even if it's not a lot, you've got to be moving for your teammates so that they can find open targets on the pass. This will come all the way back to Pines. A little bit of pressure. Cody Albrecht, who was simply outstanding in that game in Ann Arbor as Michigan tried to hang on. Everything kept falling to Albrecht, and he just kept serving in wonderful balls to his Terrapins teammates. Here's a Tua Henny in a foot race with Pines, and it'll go out of bounds. Shaka Daly, the head coach at Michigan, coming over from his alma mater, Providence. Looking to make a difference. You see his record has been right around 500. Went to the NCAA tournament in his first year. He's got some big time recruits. I'm talking a phenomenal class coming in next year. He's excited about that class with the Tuaheni and Hallahan up top. Serta to Hallahan. Little spin, thought it was out of bounds. Stays inbounds, Serta under pressure. Jake. Zinski and Sasho Sarovsky, a true pioneer in the college game, two-time national champion, 24th season 
as the top man at Maryland, has created this atmosphere with the crew. Number one attendance in the country here in College Park, Maryland. Just simply amazing. Dean, one of the things Michigan wants to do is they want to find Francis and Tuohenny quickly. They want to get him the ball up top, hope for an isolated situation between him and one of the defenders, preferably Donovan Pines, because he doesn't quite have the experience that, uh, that Alex Cronali has, and hopefully get one on the board. And then not to sit back and park any buses, but, but at least put Maryland in a situation where they have to go after the game a little bit harder. Maybe knock their mental comfort a little bit with a goal before the Terrapins get on the scoreboard. Four minutes in. And Niedermeyer way outside his goal. The Big Ten goalkeeper of the year, Cody Niedermeyer, of course, waited his time behind Zach Steppens for just a brief time. Steppens, quality goalkeeper that turned pro early. And Cody Niedermeyer came in last year, sharing time with Dane St. Clair to start the season, about four games, and he took over and has never relinquished the job. No, and rightly so. Cody Niedermeyer is not just a, a great goalkeeper, but he's got a great personality. Even when he was injured back when Zach Steppen was here, opportunities for him to be a leader in the locker room stood out to Sasho Sarovsky, and Sasho knew that Cody would one day find his, find his moment, seize the opportunity, and be the leader that the team needed in the back. Been in College Park this week, and the folks at Maryland say Cody Niedermeyer might be the most favorite student athlete, basketball and football combined, for the students, if they voted, they may pick Cody Niedermeyer. Right now, Elney challenging Evan Laurel. Well, ball was down the field, and Laurel was up off his line anyway, so not much for him to come out beyond the, beyond the top of the box and clear that ball out. He's just got to be sure to be communicating with his two central defenders when he does that. The big man, Pines, the freshman from Clarksville, Maryland, River, River Hill High School, and Pines will come back to Niedermeyer. Trying to find Gordon Wild, who's got 15 goals and four assists. His 34 points lead all Big Ten players. He's your Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. He's super special, Dean. He doesn't need a lot of space. We've seen that in the games that we've covered, and the games even we haven't covered, to watch highlight film of the way Gordon Wild has completed plays for Maryland through the course of the season. Not a lot of room needed for him to get the job done. Mar Sadich, who was injured in that game in Ann Arbor. So he was out with an injury. And then you had Sebastian Elney, Eric Williamson, and DJ Reeves out with food poisoning. Didn't play at all. And they're all available. We do expect to see Reeves coming off the bench along with George Campbell. There's Suli Danka. You know how they knew it was food poisoning? Those guys were sitting at the same end of the table and shared the same portion of food that was offered. They were in bad shape. I mean, remember even Suli Denka talking in the interview, yeah, they looked bad and they sat out. And even as we flashed to the bench during that game, you could see they just looked flush. They were there, but certainly bundled up and had no intentions of being inserted. That was a part of a very, let's take a look at this clash here, is Cody Albrecht wearing that captain's armband. Clash of heads. Albrecht goes up for that second ball. And there's the touch against Serta. And it looked like Albrecht was going in. Really important that the officials and the staff take their time with this one. We mentioned last week's game in Ann Arbor. It's Cody Albrecht getting up. Sasha Swarovski dealing with the injury to Sadich, the food poisoning. And then also, just before the game, that Saturday, his mom, who lives in Windsor, Canada, crossing the street, was hit by a car and sent to the hospital in intensive care. Sasha telling me yesterday that she's out of intensive care She's got multiple injuries, but working her way back, our prayers are certainly with her and the entire 
Sarosky family. We're going to get a look at Andrew Samuels now in that central defensive midfielder role as Cody Albrecht is being taken care of on the Maryland bench. Samuels has been a utility guy for Maryland. He's plugged in different spots in the midfield and then back at times, too. Yeah, he's been the starting left back, actually. And really, his health was an issue coming into this one. Otherwise, he probably would still be starting a left back. Here's Eric Williamson. He's got Elney on the right. Does he see him? Still, Wild was there. Looked like Elney wanted it, but Williamson was looking at Gordon Wild instead. Last year, we thought it was going to be Elney and Williamson up front, right? We thought that would be the strike partnership. And then Gordon Wilde came in here. But you see the speed that Williamson has got when he explodes off the line and makes that cutting run across the field. Eric Williamson actually lit up the scoreboard last year in Columbus, Ohio, as Maryland won the Big Ten tournament title. Hallahan on the right side, dancing around Suli Danka. Hallahan, great ball. Atua Haney had already made the run, though, and he was leaving it, hoping that either Anderson or Nason were there. Counter quickly, though, for Maryland. Well rested. Wild will drop it now to Sadage. Sadage. Rosansky shows. Now it's Samuels. And Samuels will lose it. Sort of the other way. They'll play it into space. Atua Henny, one of the fastest players in the country. And Atua Henny trying to run it down. He does. Atua Henny marked by Pines, working that end line. And they'll say, corner kick, Michigan. Dean, this is the isolation I was talking about with Atua Henny. Instead of seeing him up the flank like we saw so much last week, we're watching Atua Henny go up the middle in a more direct style of play today. Donovan Pines gets isolated, 1v1, chasing Atua Henny to the goal line. It's a sophomore versus a freshman, two really good, strong players. And the corner kick earned and won by Michigan. So corner kick Michigan, Eckenrode will come forward. He has been searching for one. They go over top of Road. This will fall to Hallahan. He was going to volley that with his left foot back across. Still loose. That was Nason. Now Wild. And Maryland comes out of that corner kick, running up the left side. Here come the Terps. Williamson, one. Now two versus four. Wild doesn't need much. And a save by Evan Laurel. It'll fall to Sadich. Sadich. Laurel doing his job. Wild will make you pay eight out of ten times with that kind of opportunity. Suli Danka. One bounce into the sun. Brett Nason and Tyler Anderson will kind of sit in front of that back four. Well, they're they're going to give Nason, the captain, a little bit more freedom to move forward when they can. Sadich, right side. Oh, Dewey Atsum, one touch. Oh, Dewey Atsum, back across. Elney searching for it. Billy Stevens will leave it for Elney. Right now, Maryland looks fresh, looks strong. Number one team in the country. Rosansky will get it back. No, he won't. Eckenrode read it. Dino Williamson and the way he gets out of space with the ball at his feet. He works the quick one, two with Gordon Wilde. Gordon's going to give this ball up, let Williamson run onto it into the open field. Look how quick he gets into the attacking third of the field. Then with the outside of his foot finds Wilde. You're right, Wilde will make you pay, but Evan Loro is at his six and does a nice job of simple shot stopping and keeping Maryland at bay. Francis Atua Henny. Atua Henny cutting it in. Hip to hip check. He says it went off pine, so does the assistant referee. Corner kick number two for Michigan. And you wonder if Michigan's going to try to change it up because of, you see Pines right there, just a giant. Cronali's a giant. So don't be surprised if later on, if they do get corners, you'll see some shorts. Right now, though, they're just looks like they're going to go straight up, but Hallahan try to pop it in there. And Michigan wins it as it goes over, and it'll be another corner kick. Dean, they're fulfilling your 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 uh, 
your principal earlier, they're looking for Lars Eckenrode. And he's on the far post. He's beyond the forest, beyond those big trees. And Eckenrode gets up and does a wonderful job of winning this ball in the crowd. And they earn another corner kick. So corner kick, Hallahan again going far post. Kept alive for Michigan. Nason. And they'll say now finally back to Maryland. Okay, make no mistake, part of Shaka Daly's plan was, hey, let's get through those first 15. Let's keep this score at zeros, and let's see what can happen. The sub right now for Maryland, Cody Albrecht is going to come back in. That is great news because it means that he passed any medical test on the side that may have indicated he had suffered a concussion. I know he's got a bump on his forehead, but it's good to see him back on the field. Of course, that's the only way he could re-enter because normally you can't re-enter in the first half, but because he went out for that protocol check, he's allowed to come back in. It's either head injuries or blood. He may have had both, actually, as Cronally will let it roll out of bounds. There's Cody Albrecht all patched up. Yep, it was blood as well, cut right by the eyebrow. Here's a guy though, tore his right knee ACL, left knee ACL, six year in college soccer. Starred for Dr. Dave Mazur at St. John's, transferred over here, waited last year so long to get in the lineup. And then by the end of the season, when Maryland started humming toward that Big Ten tournament title, guess who was in there? He's, he's terrific. I mean, he's, uh, he's the kind of player that other teammates look for. And they gain confidence knowing that he's on the field and he's, he's holding down the fort. That's one of the reasons why he's wearing the captain's armband. Senior from Calverton, Maryland. <laughs> Morrow, not a bad ball, actually. Switching it a little bit too much to handle there for Riley Woods, but good idea. I wasn't expecting that. It's, it's indirect, but you know, if Woods is able to control that, bring it down, the big service to the far post, and you find Jack Callahan make it a run. Cornally, Sadich. And now Odui Atsum. Robbie Mertz, who has been playing at number 10, but with Shaka Daly playing Rutgers yesterday. They go a little bit more defensive in the middle, so Mertz will slide out to the left side. And he had a goal last week. Showed what he can do when he's got the opportunity to get forward. They had great service last week from most of the first half for Michigan. A two a Henny, the play advantage. Billy Stevens, Michigan has come to play. Building off that confidence. They had a two nothing lead last week against Maryland. Maryland scoring late, that goal from Adui Atsum. The right back and then the left back, Suli Denko with the winner in double overtime with just minutes to play. That was a thrilling game in Ann Arbor. And Chris Doran, I felt like you said it best in the recap. You really felt bad for Michigan, who gave a valiant effort. Well, it was senior day. It was the last regular season game. They had nothing really on the line other than to prove themselves in front of uh, a national television audience and against the number one team in the country. There's a lot of energy that goes into that last regular season game for the seniors and the guys who've supported them over the years. And I thought Michigan played an outstanding game. I actually went ahead and sent an email to the staff at Michigan this, this week, and I said, one of the more courageous performances I've seen. Morris. One of those seniors. The flip side of that, Dean, from last weekend is that even with the food poisoning that some of the players were dealing with and the fact that we had Maryland players sitting on the bench not intending to play, you look at how deep Maryland's bench is and the fact that they can come back from down two and in the second half not only earn two, but then have enough in the tank to get that third goal in overtime. Not only that, when we talked to Sasso Sarosky at halftime, I felt like he looked right in the camera and said, hey, 
no sweat. And then Suli Danka backed that up when he said, hey, normally a game like that where we're not playing well, Sasha will kind of give it to us a little bit. But he laid off, said, no problem, guys, we got this. And right. Sasha Ross, guess what? They're undefeated in the number one team in the country. Yeah. Says a lot about the coaching, a lot about the recruiting, a lot about the character of the players who've committed to play at Maryland. Michigan, though, picking right up from that performance and looking solid so far. Three corners. Otua Henny just trying to get it in the box. And here's Alex Cronalli. Starred in the youth programs in Ohio. Knew he wanted to go to Maryland, and what a senior campaign he's had. The Big Ten Defender of the Year. And Samuels is now back into the game, but this time at left back, and Pines has gone to the bench. Eckenrode. And Niedermeyer has it. And a little bit of a push right there by Nason. Abby Okalaja, the man in the middle. There's no harm, no foul. Now, Eckenrod and Suli Denka played together. As you look at this opportunity, not too bad. Uh, you know, as a goalkeeper, you, you're inviting that contact, and you're confident that you're going to win the leap. You've got your arms extended beyond however far that player that you're opposing is able to jump. Niedermeyer expects to come down with that ball. That contact is not unnatural. Stevens will build it out of the back. Congratulations to Todd Yegley and the Indiana Hoosiers, Hoosiers, John Trask and the Wisconsin Badgers, Damon Renzi, and the Michigan State Spartans for advancing to next weekend's Final Four in Grand Park, Indianapolis. And with that, congratulations to all of the coaches. Their season perhaps ending today. Zansky won a national championship at Virginia in 2014. All ACC freshman player transferring to Maryland to try to win another one. Evo Serta taking it right away from Cronelli. Oh, two ahead. A two ahead is in. One on one. A two ahead. And he's off the far side. I think it may have hit the post. If it did, it was oh so close. If it did and went the wrong way, how unlucky can you be? You know, I was just getting ready to compliment Alex Cronali the way he played that second defender's role and helped clean things up. But he did too much here in the midfield, and he's got no support behind him. This release of the ball to the outside, and the two ahead, he is off to the races. Great work by our crew catching that angle because you can see just how close a two ahead he came to putting this one away and giving Michigan the lead. It grazed the post. Yesterday here against Rutgers, Atua Henny and Yaman Salul had multiple breakaways and they just couldn't finish. And Shaka Daly saying that's the story of the season. They've outshot 80% of their opponents. It's that finishing that's not quite been there. Now look, he's finished quite a bit, seven goals and four assists. Shaka Daly told me though, he could have 15 goals easy. Yeah, you would think so with the number of times he's able to put the ball on frame, but he just hasn't. And, and you know, maybe part of it, and this is so interesting to me, maybe part of it is that he has to do so much work before he gets to a point where he can shoot. I mean, you saw he was off to the races from midfield, Dean. He did a, he did it, you know, 45 yard run. The guy has to be ultra fit to be able to pull this off. And I'm not saying he's not, but to do that time and again and again, it starts to take a toll. Excellent point. Maryland under some pressure here, though, from the visitors. It'll fall to Anderson. Anderson to Woods with that great left foot. Deflected off, Cronalli, Niedermeyer will keep it in bounds. In contrast, Gordon Wilde, the leading goal scorer in the conference with 15 or 16 goals. How many times do you see him make a 45-yard run and then shoot? You Rarely. don't. Nope. He gets the ball at the top of the 18. He takes two touches and finishes. You know, so that's the difference, I think. Excellent point. It's pretty hard to score on a full sprint, for sure. I mean, it happens, but it, it you know, it, you're the only guy involved. I think the support of Jack Hallahan in recent games throughout the course of the season have been, has been terrific. And that bodes well for the Wolverines in the years to come. 
So Sebastian Elney is going to make way for George Campbell. Campbell started last Sunday in Ann Arbor as Elney, one of those three players with the food poisoning. And you got to believe it. He's still trying to get his sea legs under him. <laughs> So Suladenka has switched back to his center back position where he's played most of the year next to Cronalli. Flag. Well, I'm not sure if he was going to pop it up or not. I mean, it didn't matter. Tua Henny couldn't get to it, but Tua Henny is testing that back line. Michigan, a Tua Henny first team all Big Ten. Lars Eckenrode, second team. Jack Hallahan made the freshman team. And Andre Morris won the sportsmanship award. The Tua Henny with three goals and two assists in the last three games of the season for Michigan. You see how important he is, the energy that he brings, and how special he is in terms of individual performance. Off the head of Nason. Cronalli, the Big Ten Defender of the Year, allows us to walk it right up to the State Farm State of Success. I love this list. Well deserved, each and every one of them. And you did a nice job of picking them, too. Gordon Wilde, no doubt there. Tanner Thompson, so important to the Indiana Hoosiers. We've talked about Alex Cronalli and Cody Niedermeyer. We love Giuseppe Baroni. We love what the Baroni family means to Michigan State soccer. And it's so great that four of those players, those four brothers, have enjoyed success with the Spartans. Giuseppe Baroni scored a cracker of a goal. The first goal for Michigan State, and we'll show it to you at halftime. Stay with us on the Big Ten Network. Alongside Chris Dorn, I'm Dean Linke. Thrilled you're with us. And we'll be with you again next weekend, Friday and Sunday, Grand Park in Indianapolis for the Big Ten Men's Soccer Tournament Final Four. Three are in, Maryland and Michigan hoping to join. Now here's what's interesting about that. Spent some time with Sasso Sarosky yesterday and we talked about some of the injuries and talked about the fact that they've had some tough games. They've had to come from behind in their last few games. And he said that his players were more focused on staying undefeated than even he was. In other words, he wouldn't have mind the loss to try to adjust some things, convert the mentality, and maybe have them not worry about it so much. So yes, are they playing to win this? Absolutely. Sasha's team always does. But it's not like a loss breaks their season. Maybe they're worried about the number one official seed in the NCAA tournament. I'm not so sure that even if they lost, they still wouldn't get the number one seed. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And, and to your point, Dean, they spent five games where they shut out opponents. They outscored their opponents 11-0. And then in those games that you're talking about where the focus was really, we think, and we've been told, was on staying undefeated, they only outscored their opponents 13 to 7. Those were five games that were decided by one goal. So the pressure really started to settle in. What do you but, think about him saying that? He would have been okay with the loss. The players didn't want it to happen. I mean, he's saying it in hindsight. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, I, I love the coaches in the conference, but it's easier to say that in, in hindsight. Well said. Here's Danka back at that center back, as I told you. No score here, 18 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first. Serta, you know, Serta who picked the pocket of Cronalli to spring a Tua Henny for, without question, the best opportunity as it grazed the far post. That's gonna be a yellow. Thought it was gonna be a yellow just to Warning, next one's going to be a yellow, though. Albrecht goes in, doesn't get any of the ball, so he decides to go for the player. 
and Woods goes down. He knows how dangerous Woods in in the open. Woods is in the open field. Woods can drive a ball and put it right where you need it to finish a play. Yeah, how is that not a yellow though? As he got around him. Yeah, maybe too early. Abby Okalaja, the man in the middle this afternoon, seasoned veteran when it comes to this high level of play. Set in for Michigan, and it'll go right to Cody Needham. Our Lars Eckenrode was lurking, and he will continue to lurk. He does not have a goal on the season, but not for a lack of trying, I can assure you that. I haven't seen Michigan throughout the season. He has been inside the 18, even the 6, on multiple occasions. And he doesn't know how to downshift either when he's headed toward goal, so Maryland's got to keep an eye on him. Eric Williamson will let it roll out of bounds. Quick throw in. Wild is in the 18. Williamson back from Jake Rosansky. Williamson taken away by Michigan. They've got a pretty good idea what they want to do when they win it in that back line, Chris. Yeah, no kidding. Look for a two ahead. And at the other end of the field, we're watching as Billy Stevens and Lars Eckenroth are sharing duties and communicating very, very well about where Gordon Wilde is and who's got him and make sure that you're on the side that denies him an opportunity should he get the ball or, or deny him the ball altogether, which is obviously the first priority. Goal side, ball side, both Stevens and Eckenrode keeping an eye on Wilde as he drifts and he looks for his opportunities. Rosansky left side to Wilde. Wilde looking to beat Stevens. Oh, and it's an own goal. Wow, you're playing fantastic. Laurel goes over, so does Morris. Wild creates the opportunity. It's an own goal, and Maryland on top, one to nothing. Oh, man. It, Evan Laurel's in the right spot there. Maybe he has to be a little bit closer to his near post in that sequence. Because once he gets his paw on that ball, it comes in front of him and crosses between him and the near post. So, scratching his head, he's put in a really good performances for Michigan. Wild so dangerous with that whipped in ball. Little time to think about. No, he was in a good spot. I'm not even sure it was Evan Laura. It may have been Andre Morris who got a toe poke on that. Yeah. Gosh darn it. It was not Evan Laura's positioning. It was an accident by Morris. So one nothing Maryland. Almost an impossible ball to deal with. Particularly the way his body, Morris, that was, was coming in. You know, and obviously Morris is making that run to cut off the cross ball. It's just that that ball was whipped in so hard that he couldn't turn it out and away. Keegan Kelly, the freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, has checked in. Campbell switch it to a Dewey Adsum on a dime. One touch. A Dewey Adsum sent in. Maryland looking for more. Eckenroll. Will head it out a good 20 yards. Dean, this is what good teams do to you. They put you under pressure. And when they put you under pressure, they're sending balls in on direct paths. They're sending the ball in indirectly. They're working their way in possession. Sometimes they're just whipping balls in. And, and you find yourself, as the defending team, having to make split-second decisions where maybe you're not in the right position to execute the way you want to execute, and you find yourself dealing with situations like the one we just saw. But you know, to be fair, Michigan has had a good part of this half of play so far, too. Without a doubt, the formation change I thought was outstanding from Shaka Daly, putting Nason in there with Anderson, creating space along the flanks, and opportunities. We talked about the Atua Henny one, and you, Michigan, you're feeling pretty good, and then just like that, you're down one nothing, and now you start to remember that you just played 90 minutes yesterday. Hallahan. Hallahan. Right by Albrecht. Oh my, what a move by Hallahan. He just needed to keep on going.
This is Hallahan on the overlap. He run does a nice job. Look at the hang up there. A little bit of contact right in the middle, holding up a two ahead. Eight. Suli Danka with his arms holding him up. Meanwhile, Niedermeyer able to start the attack the other way. Rosansky will switch it. It'll fall to Wild. Overlapping run. Odui adds him. Odui adds him with Woods there. Morris there as well. Quickly back to Wild. Boy, I love that pass right there from Odui adds him. Didn't hesitate to get it back into the 18 to Wild. Now Albrecht. Danka. Coming into the game now, Keegan Kelly. Kelly put in a long shift. He started last Sunday as part of the somewhat makeshift lineup. Look at a two ahead. He fight and fight and fight. I think that's off Maryland. I think it's a corner kick or a throw in near the corner flag. It'll be a throw in. And that's because Francis Atua Henny, Sir Francis, is a handful. I think that was Cody Albrecht who was trying to hold him up on the run. Good luck. Eckenrode's going to come forward. There's one less tree in that forest, though, with pines on the bench. But the biggest tree, Cronelli, will head it. Now the counter off the corner kick. When Michigan brings forward numbers, they open themselves up to this. Wild, wild on the turn and a great tackle by Morris. One of the first times we see Gordon Wild making that 45 yard run and that final touch let him down. That's good strong defensive work by Andre Morris. Of course it's Andre Morris who had the own goal. Feel bad for the senior, but continuing to fight for Shaka Daly and the Michigan Wolverines. Andrew Samuels. Rosansky. Kelly. Let's go back to that goal. Michigan was playing so great, and then Maryland got rolling down the left side. Yeah, he got loose. Gordon Wild, and he gets to the goal line and whips this ball in. Not much in the way of targets, but Andre Morris there caught facing his own goal. Worst case scenario for a defender. And as Evan Loro comes diving out, a gap for that ball to be poked through. Injured player is up. Shaka Daly, gonna go to his bench. Ryan Kobikoff, along with Yaman Salul. Salul had a couple goals just two games ago against Oakland. He had a one-on-one -on -one breakaway against David Greshik and Rutgers yesterday, but just kind of spilled it. And Stevens now, and Stevens, who unfortunately is Prone to some yellow cards. And he's got a discussion here now. He got a yellow card yesterday as well. It, it's an ironic picture, but it, I can understand why Stevens would be making his case. He made contact. Watch this. First bit of contact comes right here. And now he's losing his footing, and Billy Stevens maybe strategically fell in the path, <laughs> path of the runner. <laughs> He's a fighter, though. Shaka Daly adores that young man, just adores him. Yes, he's prone to some yellow cards, but man, does he wear it on his sleeve as the header coming from Cronalli almost made it 2-0, very close to making it 2-0. Had a chance to uh, shake hands with Billy's dad, as a matter of fact, here this afternoon. A lot of the parents from both teams in attendance, as you would expect, as the subs come in for Michigan. Yeah, you hung out with Mr. and Mrs. Cronalli as well. We met D.J. Reeves' dad. Yeah, it told us that D.J. Reeves was recruited by 
Florida, Michigan, Ohio State to be a running back in football, which isn't too surprising because DJ Reeves' dad brother starred for Bo Schemblechter at the University of Michigan. How about that as his son's now playing for Maryland? When you think about DJ Reeves and his experience at the academy level and the kind of teams that have called on him for college soccer to hear that he was recruited by some of the best football programs in the country is really surprising. Booted out of there by Niedermeyer. Rosansky. Morris will clear it. Stevens and Reeves are having a hard time letting that last bit of contact go here on this near side. Samuels didn't start, came on when Cody Albrecht had that cut above his eye, then came off and came back on for Pines as he told Sasha he was feeling good. And that was the concern. That's why he didn't start, has been bothered by an injury. So really that cut to Cody Albrecht was probably good for Sasha Swarovski because it gave him a rare opportunity, you can't do that normally, to get in and get some action. DJ Reeves had that touch a moment ago. Albrecht calling for it. Cronally. We've seen Cronally use some soft feet moving forward at times. Can't get it to Wild as Stevens is there. Samuels will leave it though for Albrecht. Good communication. You knew that Albrecht was telling Samuels that I got this one. Saul with Albrecht just holding down the fort. Sasso Soroski telling me that the key was to manage UM Sir Francis and Hallahan. Talking about Francis Atua Henny and Jack Hallahan. Maryland now pressuring again with George Campbell. He wanted to handle the Michigan counter and attack that back line in front and behind, and that's been the difference so far, getting down that left side. Yeah, they've done a, a nice job, and, you know, Maryland is so comfortable in possession. If it doesn't work out, they reload through Albrecht. They use Crenali in the back, too, to, to reload, reset themselves, create some space, and then pick a different, a, a different approach. And we've seen they can play both in an indirect fashion and a direct fashion, too. Their counterattack is exceptional with the speed they've got up top. So Gordon Wild will come out as Emmanuel Corval, who started last Sunday in Ann Arbor, as they went with Kelly and Corval and Campbell in starting positions. And here's Campbell now. Campbell. Miss hit that one. Now Michigan, while they've had some struggles this season, they've had a couple of bright spots in particular. I go back to watching them host Indiana and a 2-1 decision where there was so much left on the field by the Wolverines. But Michigan has not won on the road this year. In fact, they have not won since September of last year on the road. And so an, this would be an important result for them to get a victory here at Ludwig. Cody Albrecht. Suli Danka. On bounce and out of bounds. Over near the bench, you see Sasso Soroski right down there. That's Wallace Lowe in the bright red jacket, just standing over the shoulder of Sasso Soroski. He's the president of Maryland. And he's always here when the Terps play. He's part of the crew, and he is very supportive. You see him right there of Sasho Soroski's work with the Starting 11, which is a group of very successful businessmen and women who allow Maryland to do fantastic things here at the stadium, make wonderful trips to Europe. 
and hopefully be part of the process. Sasha wants a permanent stadium with locker rooms and lights and right on top of the field. And if anybody can make it happen, guess who it is? Sasha Swarovski will make it happen. No kidding. Kelly. Now Reeves. Reeves on Stevens. Reeves with some speed. There's that running back speed. Reeves stays with it. And it'll fall to Samuels. Squared neatly to Albrecht. Tough bounce, but he still handles it. Now it's Kelly. Rosansky telling him he's behind him. Deflected. And it looked like there was a... Nope, just a throw in. As flag went up, indicating throw in. Here's Kelly. Kelly cutting back and cleaned up there by Ryan Kobakoff. You see Maryland now owning the middle third and in possession, spending a lot of time the last couple of minutes in the final third. Michigan doing a nice job of getting numbers in there and cutting down the availability of channels for combination play. But when you have a solo effort like you just had from DJ Reeves, you've got a really dangerous situation if he ever gets that ball off of his foot. Watch as he goes 1v1 and is not stymied at all by the crowd in the middle and stays on his feet. We even heard players calling for the ball, but he was looking, looking at goal until Michigan was able to stymie the effort. Yeah, you hit YouTube. Go to DJ Reeves, and you'll see him running the football. You won't even see him playing soccer. He was that good in high school. And now we'll have another card here. Michigan's got one already. Looks like Cody Albrecht is going to pick this one up. Oh, that's Cody Albrecht. Good call, yep. So Cody Albrecht with the card. Stevens now with the other one. Left of the screen. Albrecht holding back the runner. Riley Woods again trying to make that run, and that's the second time that we've seen that. Remember earlier in the match, we thought we were going to see a yellow card between those two, and it was going to go to him. Right. Uh, second time around, Abby Okalaja with good memory. Ekenrode climbing the ladder. It's loose, and it's in. Ekenrode amongst the forest. It'll fall to Anderson, and we are tied at one. Dean Linky, you ought to buy a lottery ticket. You've been plugging away at Lars Eckenroad and the stock that he has in terms of value. In these set piece situations, trying to get at the other end of it to finish a play with his head. He does make contact with this ball, but he puts it at the foot of his teammate. And Riley Woods finishing that up. Or is it Tyler Anderson? My, well, Anderson hit it, but then Salou was standing there as well. So Eckenrode will definitely get an assist. And I think it's Anderson, but Yamun Salou, number 20, may have deflected it. We'll get confirmation. No matter what, though, it is because Eckenrode dropped it back across. Anderson popped it with speed, and he'll either get it, or number 20, Salou will get it. Either way, Michigan's got one, and we are tied at one. Salul, that's a pretty good trap. Steven just smoked it into him, but he'll lose it then. Campbell, Rosansky, and here's the quick movement of Maryland. This is Terp soccer at its finest. Rosansky was hoping Odui Atson would be there. Well, it has to be fast right now because of the pressure Michigan has brought off the bench. The spirit of applying pressure quickly to deny Maryland the opportunity to kind of pick and choose which channels they want to work through. Danka. Reeves putting some pressure on Morris, so Morris will boot it long. They don't have the speedy Atua Henny up there right now, though. Different kind of player in Salu. He is your old school center forward, back to goal type player. He may have got a touch on that pop from Anderson. They'll say no, it was clean from Anderson. Anderson gets credit for the goal. Salou perhaps gets credit for a shield at the road with the assist. So Dewey Edson trying to make it two to one though. Way out of danger there and in. Dropped over and it's DJ Reeves. 
Oh, Dewey Edson making it happen. Michigan's defense got a little stuck there in that sequence. And Adui Atsum was able to make the cut that he needed to find DJ Reeves. Evan Lauro even came out on the commitment too. Adui Atsum. And you see the three central defenders, the goalkeeper and the two center backs kind of get stuck there coming out on Adui Atsum and DJ Reeves with his second goal of the season. Simple and sweet from the six. How about that answer for the former football star? But give Chris Dewey had some all the credit. He put that one on a platter. He had some special silverware with it as Reeves just dropped it in. So Michigan ties it, and Maryland comes right back to take a 2-1 lead with under a minute remaining. Here's Riley Woods with that great left foot. Looking for Lars Eckenrode. Sent out by Danka. Back in again. Danka and Eckenrode played together as kids, played together at DC United Academy, and now they're going at it here. Championship caliber teams have the answer to a draw situation like we've seen in the last handful of minutes. You're at home, you're ranked number one in the country. The opponent draws level with you with a handful of minutes to go in the half, and a championship caliber team comes right back and answers. They may not be done, Maryland, with Reeves and that quickness. We knocked out of bounds. Michigan did everything they could to fight back. But Crystal Dewey had some to this man, DJ Reeves, off the bench and in as Maryland on top two to one at half. That's a good performance from Maryland. They, I think that there were a lot of parts of their game that were working through large portions of the half, but Michigan climbing in this game, as you would expect. Joined now by Sasso Sarosky, the head coach of Maryland. And Sas, Chris is right. Michigan has played well, but Maryland with the answer, a pretty solid first 45, coach. Well, I think you're both being quite kind. Thank you. Uh, I didn't think we played very well at all. I have to credit Michigan. Uh, they. You know, for playing yesterday, they came out with a lot of energy, a, a lot of, you know, uh, competitive spirit. Uh, I thought our passing was poor. I thought our movement off the ball was poor. Uh, I expect us to be better. We had a great week of training. There should be no excuse. I think the second half you'll see us uh, perform at a much higher level. Coach, what is your expectation in terms of personnel? It looks like you've got everybody sort of in the mix. Is it is it working out the way you had planned going into tonight? Yeah, well, I think they, they changed up and put Francis in the middle, so we needed to put Suli back in the middle. It was a little better matchup in there. Um, I thought the kids came came in, DJ Reeves, George, and uh, Keegan all did a really good job, helped us out, I think, brought a little bit of energy. You know, some of the kids that were out with uh, with the illness last week didn't get better till Thursday. They trained well, but uh, I think we get a little more out of them second half. Coach, you're winning. Your daughter, Casey, won the Patriot League at Bucknell. Pretty good day so far. Enjoy the second half, okay? It's Carly, by the way, Dean. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, it. Co Congrats to right. Bucknell Women's Soccer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Carly getting it done. Thanks for correcting me, Sasho. This is Carly Sarosky winning at Bucknell in Maryland, leading here over the Michigan Wolverines 2-1 to one at halftime of the Big Ten quarterfinals from College Park, Maryland. Halftime here in College Park, Maryland. The crew, look at them, packed in there. Lead the nation in attendance this season. These two teams met a year ago as well in the quarterfinals, and it was tight for a while, Chris. Yeah, really surprising that result because in the regular season, they drew 0-0, but it was a much different affair when they met in the postseason. That is the Big Ten quarterfinal here at Ludwig. You, one of your favorite players getting things started for Maryland. Amar Sadich. Amar Sadich did a great job, and, and Michigan found their way closer to this, but it was three quick goals from Maryland, and they just ran away with the result in the last matchup between these two teams. Now joined by Shaka Daly, the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. One day after beating Rutgers, Shaka, I thought your team was outstanding in the first 45. Your thoughts? 
Yeah, I thought we were good, and uh, we shot ourselves in the foot a little bit with the uh, with the own goal, and then the giveaway in our own third. I thought we played uh, quite well, passed it well, and obviously we got to keep going here in the second half and keep the pressure on Maryland as much as possible. All right, Shaka, they're ready to go, so we'll let you get back to work. Thanks for being with us. All right, thank you. Shaka Daly, the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. They were quite good in the first half. They were. I think their game plan came together very, very nicely. This second half, though, is going to be a test. But I like the way Shaka Daly has worked through some of his reserves. He's got some fresh legs on there. And, and even the fresh legs came in with some intense spirit and put some pressure on Maryland. Let's keep in mind that not only that, that own goal, a letdown, sure, but they scored on their own. And they've got three corner kicks to no corner kicks for Maryland. So that proves that Michigan is getting forward and putting the Maryland defense under pressure. And equally, at the other end, Maryland has not been able to really get much in the way of attacking opportunities off the Michigan goal line. So, so far, so good for the Wolverines. Except on the scoreboard, where they're down one. And you see the You're bringing crew. the party down. <laughs> As they boot it long, just stating the facts. <laughs> the crew now has moved behind the goal on the other side, though, as Evan Laurel will continue to learn more about his family's history, I believe. Now, you tell tell everyone about the crew, because you, you've got, you, you like to go back to that a lot. Oh, yeah, fantastic fan base started. It's the number one student fan base, I do believe, in the country, even in the preseason. They'll get two, 3,000 people out here to get their scarves and t-shirts and and they're known as the crew and they are there's a, a big social network or social media effort underway each and every season to make sure that the numbers turn out always and they always do right this year number one in the country and they're right behind evan laurel last year the crew got so excited when sebastian elney beat the ucla bruins and what is the all-time leading crowd they Pulled the stands down over there, but everybody was okay. Safety first, but they were pretty fired up. Game seen right here on the Big Ten Network as Laurel will boot it along to Hallahan. Hallahan goes down. Free kick opportunity for Michigan. Booted long, looking for a two of Henny. It'll fall. Now to Hallahan. Hallahan has Stevens behind him. He's also got four white jerseys. He'll use Stevens. Stevens with that right foot high. And Cody Niedermeyer brings it down. And he'll roll around. Of course, Sasso Swarovski really leading the charge with the crew. His wife, Shannon higgins Soroski was with Carly, not Casey. Carly, who helped Bucknell win the Patriot League over Nancy Feldman at Boston University. And of course, Shannon higgins Soroski won four national championships at North Carolina and won a World Cup title for the USA in 91. One of the best soccer players you'll ever see in the women's game. Look how Cronali is getting to know Francis Atua Henning. This is the second Sunday in a row these two have spent with one another, and a foul is called against the big Maryland center back. Riley Woods and Atua Henning, though, offside. Atua Henning wanted that ball in that spot. He made that run just a hair early. Entirely possible that Woods didn't quite release that ball on time on the set piece. But the energy Atua Henny brings and the attention he draws from defending teams, such an asset for the Wolverine soccer program. DJ Reeves, the goal scorer, has stayed in up top. 
for the Maryland Terrapins to start the second half. As it's Reeves and Wild. Wild also got a break, but he's back in there. Look at Atua Henny on the spin around Cornelia. Atua Henny. Pretty good speed, though, by Adewey Atsum. Atua Henny, Adewey Atsum knocks it out. Corner kick, Michigan. So Cronali got called on the foul the last time these two got together. That was about a minute ago. This time, Cronali keeps his hands off, and that gives the space for Atua Henny to make the turn and get around him into the space. Adewey Atsum has got to get in there and cover for his center back. Thankfully for Maryland, Odui Atsum is also one of the fastest players in the country. Excellent close. Here's Anderson. Anderson's got the goal for Michigan. Riley Woods sent in. Now Anderson, more central to Hallahan. Hallahan, outstanding ball. The flag stays down. Robbie Mertz. Now Woods. Oh my! Atua Henny flying high, and we are tied at two. Sir Francis Atua Henny has tied it up. We always talk about the first five minutes. Coming out of the locker room, you've got to be attentive to detail. Dean, you asked whether or not Michigan would go to the short corner kick after dealing with the forest of uh, Cronali in the set piece situations, and indeed they did, but Lars Eckenrod is in there doing battle, and that frees up a two a Henny. He was not marked by Cronali the way he should have been. Plenty of space in which to work. What a performance from Francis Atua Henny. Can almost, if you could, give an assist to Eckenrod as he was drawing attention, right? He was standing right there. There was a white jersey. I think it was Suli Danka hanging on to him, as it is a Tua Henny with his eighth goal of the season for the first team all Big Tenner. Last year's Big Ten freshman of the year when he had 10 goals. And a Tua Henny all over Cornelli. A Tua Henny in a foot race with Niedermeyer. And Niedermeyer almost sliding out of the 18. Ironic because. Sasha Sarovsky told us before the halftime break that they were moving Suli Danka back in because he was a better matchup for Atua Henny. Well, Atua Henny was free because Lars Eckenrode was dealing with Suli Danka. Robbie Mertz. Now, last time Michigan scored on that long shot from Anderson, Dewey Atson came back the other way capitalizing on a turnover and dropped it to Reeves within seconds, really. Let's see if that happens again. Abby Okolaja with a laugh there with Brett Nason, one of the captains for Michigan. All right, you, you've already pegged the Lars Eckenrode involvement on free kicks, and you've pegged the Atua Henny activity. I'll tell you what, mister. <laughs> We're going to find you on the sideline next year instead of the booth if you keep this up. I doubt that. Good man, Chris Dorn. Here's a free kick for Maryland. Tied at two. They'll be looking for Cronally. Cronally flying in with Eckenrode there. Cleaned up by Evan Laurel. So here come the Michigan Wolverines. Tough season. They've outshot, as we said, 80% of their opponents. They've had losses where they've dominated games, heartbreaking losses in overtime, not just that game last week against Maryland, but other overtime losses. And here they are after playing Dan Donigan's Rutgers team yesterday, one o'clock right here at Ludwig Field. They've tied it up with a little over 37 minutes to go. Sulidanka long to Eckenrode. Eckenrode feeling some pressure from Reeves. Dean, Michigan hasn't won on the road since September of last year. They're playing the number one team in the country. They played them in one half to a 2 0 score last weekend. Gordon Wild down near the end line. Stays in bounds. And Wild with that great left foot will drop it back to Cody Albrecht. Now Rosansky popping it into space. Samuels, the left back, back across, looking for Reeves. 
Watch after the short corner kick how Michigan gets really picky about what they're going to do with the ball. Here's Hallahan. He could rip this shot if he wanted to, but he plays this through ball. He actually splits the defenders. And now the service back is going to result in the big ball to the far post, where Atua Henny is separated from Cronali and is able to finish. Hallahan forewent the opportunity to shoot there, knowing that he was going to have to deal with bodies in the box, and opted instead to work through his teammates and build that play even further. Reeves. And now Wild. But team Michigan knows that Maryland has played their last five games to a one goal difference in each of those final scores. And they've had to play three overtime games as well. So, so, so making sure you lasso every moment of this game, no matter what the facts are about yesterday, the fact that they had to play. Michigan is in a great situation right now, and they cannot let it go. Maryland beat West Virginia on October 10th, one to nothing, then 3-2 over Wisconsin, 2-1 over American, 2-1 over Hofstra, and 3-2 over Delaware and Michigan. Robbie Mertz lost a boot. Robbie Mertz, the baby-faced assassin for the Michigan Wolverines. Boy, he did an exceptional job last weekend. He and his teammates. Right now, Michigan causing all kinds of problems for that back line of Maryland. I feel like Francis Atuahene's stride has expanded by about three feet. I don't know what they did in the locker room during the break, but man, oh man. Woods with the throw in to Atua Henny. Atua Henny staying with it. Anderson back across one bounce, and Cody Niedermeyer has it. See who wins the second ball. Maryland for the moment off of Michigan, so throw in to the Terps. Dean, I feel like over the next five to ten minutes, we're going to see some players getting a breather. And then we'll have about 15 minutes where there are going to be reserves in, where both teams are going to have to make sure they stay solid in their connectivity as it relates defensively and offensively in terms of shape. And then we'll see a, a flurry in the final 15 or 18 minutes where those starters come back in. They're fresh, they're, they're rested, and they're able to contribute down the stretch. Played long to Reeves, sent out of bounds with safety by Morris. Started on the left side, they'll come over to the right side. Oh, do we add some? Mertz taking it away. Mertz gets stuck in. He'll drop it to Woods. Woods to a two ahead. Cronelli needs to be careful, looking for support. Cronelli calling for it from a do we add some? And Cronelli did well just to hold him up. You can see him signal to a do we add some for support. Game starting to open up. Rosansky. 
Left side to Williamson. And cleared out by Eckenrode. Look at that play from Amar Sadich. And then taken down. Sasso Swarovski wanted a call there. Woods to a Tua Henny, Cronelli with a bit of a shoulder shiver. No whistle as Abby Okalaja maybe evening things up after that last tackle on Sadich. Here's Laura under more high pressure from Reeves. This game, this game can't stay opened up too long. Michigan cannot allow that to, to be the case. They've got to pick and choose their spots. They played a full game yesterday. They're not going to have, they, they can't possibly have the reserves in them to allow this game to be wide open like this for the remaining 30 minutes. So they've just got to, they've got to withstand this, this segment of the game right now. from Cody Albrecht. Pressure from Francis Atua Henning. Congratulations to Stephanie Golan and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The Big Ten Tournament champions knocking off Rutgers by a score of two to one. There's Kelly and Campbell. Going to check on in for Sasha Swarovski and Chris Dorn. You just said it. This is the time where Sasha, who's got that Team A and Team B, he'll start working players in. He'll give quality players a rest and then bring them on for the last 15. And you use the letters A and B, but I know you're not rating the quality of those players. They are all top level players. We've talked about this, Dean, throughout the course of the season. Some of the guys who come off the bench are actually viable starters for any Division I college program in the country. Maybe two starting 11s for Sasha Sarovsky. Michigan, not quite as deep. They've had a tough season this year. Their season's on the line, to be honest. They don't win today and have the chance to play in a semifinal on Friday in the Big Ten Tournament. Their season's done, and there's probably no invite to the NCAA postseason. At this point, Michigan's got to win the Big Ten Tournament in order to count on an invitation to the NCAAs. Meanwhile, Abby Ogolaja basically said, Billy, you might be sitting south of your bench over there if you come close to another card right there, and that's pretty good officiating. Stevens already sitting on a yellow. He's got to be careful as the Terps send it to the box. Cronalli bounces over. Campbell's there. Laurel stayed put. It almost bounced in as it went about four or five yards. Wrong side of the far post. He's got to stay cool as a cucumber back there and continue with his communication. I'm watching for the Michigan players. They have not dropped their chins. When you start to get fatigued, you start you you start talking less frequently to your teammates. Their chins are up, their chests are out. So far, so good for the Wolverines in the second half. So Yamin Salul has made his way over in front of the fourth official's table. He'll try to check in for Michigan. The Wolverine staff, Shaka Daly, Tommy McManamy, Justin McCarr, Christian Vasquez, Bill Schenever. Bombed in, Laurel came out with authority. So 
Wilde did not come out, or if he did, he came right back in. As he went over to the bench, and he's still out there. Bomb long from Evan Loro. Take a look at the Big Ten men's soccer tournament bracket. Congratulations to Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Indiana. Yeah, great performances by the top seeds. Um, how about Northwestern taking Indiana to overtime, but dropping that one. Tim Lenahan and the Wildcats going to Bloomington with a tough assignment. Same for the Buckeyes. Wisconsin's got something special going this year, Dean. They really do. And John Trask has his team in the top 20 and slowly climbing up that RPI ladder which is what they needed to do. That outstanding junior class sprinkled in with some quality internationals. Couple fantastic players from Germany, including their goalkeeper. Yeah, Tim Lenahan, great shout out by the way. They beat Notre Dame this year and some big Big Ten wins down the stretch of the season. Yep. That was the turn of events when he started playing with five in the back. And um, you know, you, you, you still have your flank play when you do that. But you've also got you've got guys in the back who are counted on to uh, take de very definitive defensive assignments and really make the field difficult to break through. Sadich over the top looking for Wild. It's Morris versus Wild. Wild gets there, keeps it all on the ground. And Sebastian Elney has come back into the game. I got to tell you, my Michigan player of the game so far is Lars Eckenrode. He's the one that knocked that ball out on the cross. He's doing the job at both ends of the field tonight, Dean. Still a lot of time left. And I like the way the pace of the game is slowed down for Michigan, but I think Maryland operates like a top-notch surgeon. They're going to gain possession of the ball, be patient, polish their passing, and find channels to break through. That's Reeves. I stand corrected. Elney has not come back in, and it was Reeves who scored the second goal for Maryland and has stayed in the game for Sasso Swarovski, and Sebastian Elney is set to che check in. Kelly, will do he at some. Will do he at some, play into himself, and Robbie Mertz will clean it up for Michigan. One of the reasons why we've seen a Dewey at some up so high on the field tonight, compared to last week, is he's not getting the pressure of a two and Campbell takes a shot, and it was Eckenrode who cleared it out. Riley Woods takes a venture with Keegan Kelly. Kelly in combination with Wild. The fans like the double spin from Wild. The pass back to Sadich, cleared again by Eckenrode. Yeah, Eckenrode, the senior, he wants his season to keep on chugging. Sebastian Elney making his way back in for Maryland, and Yaman Salul will go ahead and give Jack Hallahan a chance to take a break. A little gamesmanship from the Irishman, taking his time coming off the field. Knowing his team is level right now with 23 to go on the road at one of the toughest spots to play a college soccer game. Hallahan still <laughs> just finally getting off the field. Abby Okalaja said, let's go. Look at Elney. What a cutback by Elney. Into the 18. Stevens slid in back across. It'll fall to Sadich. Bounced up on him. And Sadich down on the ground was ready to find the back of the net. A tough hop for Sadich. Maybe a little frustration from Amar Sadich. He's such a clever player, but this is great work from Sebastian Elney, who's got fresh legs coming right off the bench, gets his first couple of touches upon returning to the match. And with about 12 yards to cover, but bodies to beat and a bouncing ball, Sadich not able to keep that under the crossbar. Long 
to a two ahead. Salul, pretty good touch. Tua Henny continues the high pressure. Kelly. Tua Henny's head ball to Salul on the run was exceptional. A Tua Henny with no room to make an error there. Campbell, what a ball, one bounce. Wild doesn't need much. And Riley Woods, out of nowhere, determined, flying in there. And Woods, another senior, trying to keep the Michigan season alive. That's just classic double team. With Andre Morris holding up Gordon Wilde and tracking it, Riley Woods comes from behind, and you let the guy coming in from the top of the field to take the ball away. That's great defensive work from the Wolverines. We still have 21 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this one. Both teams bending, not breaking. Terrific work by Riley Woods. Andre Morris is gonna hold up Gordon Wilde. That's what he thinks he has to beat, but Riley Woods comes in and picks his pocket. That's just great defending from Michigan. If Andre Morris overcommits in that situation, Riley Woods cannot be as of much help as he was in the way it played out. For Maryland, we're seeing much more of Chris Adui Atson making his way up the flank. And what I referenced earlier is the fact that last week we saw a lot of Francis Atuahene working his way down the left flank, and that kept Adui Atson really busy defending against Atuahene. This week, we're seeing more of a two ahead going up the middle, working against Suli Danka and Alex Cronali, and that frees up a Dewey Atson to get down the flank. Wild. And Samuels on the left, but chose to come back to the right. Oh, Dewey Atson making that run. Now here's Elney. Elney looking to first time into Wild. Look at the speed of a Tua Henny. Out of a rocket. A Tua Henny. Out of nowhere. Putting pressure on. Drops it back. Salula's there, but can't get it over the six foot five. Alex Ronali. Are you kidding me with a Tua Henny? He was 20 yards behind the ball and got to it. Wild. The nutmeg through Morris. Special play, and the fans like it. Campbell can't find Kelly. Woods is there again. Maryland will knock it on the door. Sebastian Elney, far side is Campbell. He'll cut it back, still loose. Slipped just for a second, and that was the difference. Michigan's defense right now exceptional. Bending where they need to bend. A little bit of space offered by Billy Stevens, but Maryland not able to find open paths. So wild again. It'll be a corner kick. Maryland. This is their first corner kick of the match, but let's go back to earlier. Francis Atuahene off to the races. That's the midfield strike. And now he's going to encounter some pressure. Does such a nice job of finding his moment to cut back. And Alex Cronali proving that that's why you need me. A big center back in the back for the number one ranked team in the country. Francis Atuahene, 18 goals in two seasons, wearing the maize and blue of Michigan. Here's the corner. High flyer, Cronelli nicks it, going near post with it, is the little man, Cody Albrecht. High flying ball, Cronelli gets underneath it, and Albrecht is hoping he's got a little more real estate to work with. Good decision from Albrecht not to think about it, just spin turn and see what happens. Cody Albrecht with two assists on the season, does not have a goal. Mertz comes off, Hallahan comes in now after a moment's rest. So you've got Salul playing in that attacking central spot. You've got Atua Henny on the right midfielder slot and Hallahan on the left midfielder slot. And Ivo Serta right underneath him. Woods to Hallahan. 
A little bit of rest, as Chris Dorn just told you. Salul. Never touched Maryland, went out of bounds. So now the Terps will pop it, looking for Elney. There's Eckenrode, who has been in the right place the entire game. Anderson winning it to Nason. As Anderson, Nason, and Serta have done the job in the middle of the park defensively for Michigan. And Maryland will play it back to Cody Niedermeyer. Defensive shape for Michigan has been good. Maryland, though, has got to go back to what got them here, and that is finely tuned possession, taking care of the ball. The row out of bounds. Player down is Cronalli. Make sure Morris had that own goal. That's the first goal of the game. Throw in Maryland. Lozanski to Campbell. Campbell. And Atua Henny just basically doing it all right now. And don't be surprised if Atua Henny is on the back end of this counter. They'll play it into space. Atua Henny looking for it. And because of that pressure, Samuels will bring it back to Niedermeyer. It's a lot of speed coming out of the back. It's several big runs from Michigan here. And great recovery from Samuels. See here now, we're still going to say that it went off of Michigan. The entire Michigan bench did not like the call. Nonetheless, Maryland with the throw in quickly. Rosansky, who really was electric last Sunday, has been a little more quiet here today. There's oh, Cornelli with a lot of jersey on Salul. There's been a lot of this. We've already seen Cody Albrecht pick up a yellow for, for two instances like this, and Alex Cronali getting involved again off the ball and holding up a player's advance down the field. Of course, Cronali had that hard tackle on a Tua Henny last Sunday that didn't even draw a yellow. I don't think it drew a foul, but drew a lot of consternation from the Michigan bench. And a Tua Henny also had one against Maryland that could have drawn some red colored paint. But here's a Tua Henny. Eckenrode, one step quicker. So at this point, and even going off of Sasha Sarosky's comments at halftime, where he felt like Maryland wasn't playing that well, and he tipped his hat to Michigan, I think you got to continue to tip that hat, don't you, right now, knowing what Michigan's gone through? Positively. Yeah, I agree with you, Dean, and I, I think it's been something similar to what we saw in the first half in the way Michigan has been able to create some pretty dangerous chances. Maryland limited in their looks at goal. This is danger, though, now, as Cronalli is in there. Wild will try to run off the ball for some kind of deflection. Right now, he's taking a look at it. He's behind the line. We'll see him run back to get in an onside position. He's onside now. It goes deep over the head of Campbell, and nothing to it. Sir Francis Atua Henny has delivered for the Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, 51st minute, down 2-1. This is a situation where Mertz places ball back in the big service to the outs or to the far post. I beg your pardon, Atua Henny is by himself. Cronali has lost his assignment, but really it was Suli Danka who, as you pointed out so astutely, was dealing with Lars Eckenrode on the ground. 
And that's what created the space for Tua Henny to be so effective in that moment. So Shaka Daly is going to give Tyler and Anderson a little bit of a rest as Ryan Kolbikoff, a sophomore from Nova, Michigan, has come back in. Do you expect to see Anderson back in there, though, as Shaka Daly loves the defensive grit that Anderson gives the team in front of that back line? Mason, who was available only for limited minutes against Maryland last week, has gone the distance wearing that armband, and that's huge for Shaka Daly. In this sequence, Mason's going to play alongside Evo Serta. So they'll sit in the holding midfielder's role. Whistle on Elney. Storm, both teams taking their time, but I'll tell you what, if this is a precursor to next weekend in Indianapolis, I'll take it. The Big Ten tournament has been strong. Great games today. This one here in College Park has also delivered the goods. Coaches talk about how much parity there is in the league, and we see that across a lot of the conferences, but in particular with the Big Ten the pot of great players from which to choose is bountiful. The coaches do a wonderful job with recruiting. The facilities at so many of these campuses are top notch and kids visit and they want to play there. Hallahan over to Woods. sequence earlier. Just a lot of contact in there. There was no whistle. As Keegan Kelly gets into a tussle and out comes Evo Serta with the ball. Cornelli read that one well and will leave it roll as we're approaching the nine minute mark here in regulation. Reminded you last week in Ann Arbor, Michigan led 2-0. Maryland got two goals in the second half and the winner in overtime as Elney will come back out. Not too pleased about being back on the bench, but DJ Reeves, who's got a goal already, they try to get it to Reeves. Snapped off the head of Morris. Marcelo Borges, normal left back, who's also been battling injury. You see Alex Cornali asserting himself, stepping way up and winning a ball, a ball that he certainly should be winning. It's the kind of thing that Sasha Sarovsky said was missing during that stretch where the team was so concerned about winning games and, and, and holding on to that undefeated season that he felt like defensively the team had sat back just a little bit and didn't appear to be maybe not so confident, but they certainly weren't asserting themselves in a situation like that one. Samuels has trouble with it, and Hallahan does it. He's got Stevens behind him. Stevens is telling him, I've got you if you need me. And there is Stevens. Stevens with that right foot. The fall to the top of the 18. That was just a crazy perfect ball from Hallahan to Stevens. He put it right in the spot that he needed it to sit for the big cross. And in hard, Ryan Kobakov giving Shaka Daly some much needed minutes. Shaka Daly only brought 17 field players. There's Eckenrode. How about Lars Eckenrode and Andre Morris? Yeah, he's got the own goal, but collectively dealing with not one, not two, not three, but four or five different center forwards 
Back and roll to Captain Morris. Woods, three seniors on that back line. Desperate to keep what has been just a really tough season. You can't put it any way, any other way. Desperate to keep it alive. Well, I think you... This is trouble, though. The flag is down. This man can finish. On his left foot, look out, and what a save. Evan Laurel with the right paw, keeping Michigan in the game. He's a big man, but boy, he's got great coverage on his goal frame. Super ball to Gordon Wilde, who knows where his defenders are. He cuts back on Woods, looks for the left foot, takes a step away from the defender, and looks for the far post. Loro is out at five yards from the line and does a great job. Dealing with more trouble, though. The corner kick comes quickly from Maryland. Michigan will do anything to get out of this one right now. And go ahead and remember that save from Evan Laurel. If Michigan could somehow win the game, number one right there just came up huge. Campbell, Serta. Now Salou. Borges. Borges battling injury. Francis Atua Henny is on the bench, getting a rest, soaking this one up, and he'll come back in recharged and ready to go and could be perhaps a difference maker for what would be, let's face it, a shocker heard round the college soccer scene if Michigan can somehow do it. They're far from having it done yet, though, as Maryland will come the other way. Maryland could score right here. It's in, it's far post. Campbell's there, too strong. And Laurel has it again. Laurel under heavy pressure right in front of the crew. I was going to comment on how well Michigan has stayed connected defensively through this game, especially in the central defense, but this is such a nice ball, and on the slip head, Evan Loro is able to keep his feet and keep that near post. Maryland trying to win it here, and Maryland, oh my! The crossbar, the best friend of the Michigan Wolverines. Can you believe it? Reeves may have been turning to celebrate already. I can't wait to get another look at that. And Reeves will drop it again. Wild again with his left foot. Sliding in there is Kovacov. And Laurel one more time. Dean, Maryland scores 50% more goals in the second half. And you're starting to see why. Look at these chances they create. Ball off the post and Michigan gets away with one. As there's no far post attacking player to finish it up. What a great shot behind the goal. Kian Dolachahi, our producer director, the entire crew getting it done. So is Maryland right now. Reeves is in with the speed, dropped over, punched out, corner kick, and a Michigan player is down, stretching out. That one looked tough. Brett Nason, we keep telling you about these seniors for Michigan that want to live another day. Nason, another one of those seniors, Chris. Well, the clock has now been stopped, and so the athletic training staff is waiting for the call in. Billy Stevens has made the call himself and told the athletic training staff not to go out, but now the coaching staff is saying go. That gives you a pretty good idea of how valuable Brett Nason is, though. You know he's banged up. That was his body stretched out to the limits, giving everything. Uh-oh, now the training staff comes out, though. He'll have to come off. Yep. Here's the opportunity. Maryland has been going at goal here for the last several minutes, and Michigan just needs a runner at the far post to finish, but Brett Mason, dressed in the maize and blue, breaks that one up. Bill Shenavier, a graduate of 96, has been with the Michigan soccer team forever. I think even back in the club days with Steve Burns who did a wonderful job creating the program at Michigan. So Mason. This is tough though and I, I think they subbed in a player. They did. They brought in Anderson just to make sure. Look at the shots here. Maryland 
with six to Michigan's one. That's in the second half, those shots. Back across, Stevens gets his head on it, kept alive by Maryland, and cleared. Players stay on side, flag is down and cleared again. As right now, you see that, remembering that stat, six shots to one here in the second half for Maryland, they're all over the Wolverines. Numbers aren't bad here, but you don't have a Tua Henny up there, so. It's a little bit different. Yeah, when Canali was caught up applying pressure after the corner kick, and that makes sense from a Maryland perspective, but if Michigan can regain possession and offer the quick counterattack, maybe a chance for the Wolverines. But as you say, the guy they've been going to on the long ball or the direct ball all game, not in the match right now. And I have a feeling his head coach is hoping to hold him out so that he's fresh for the overtime session. Interesting point, Chris Torn. He's standing behind Shaka Daly right now. He wants to go in so bad. And you can see him now talking with Tommy McMenemy. And now he'll take off his penny. So expect a Tua Henny pretty soon here. Foul on Kovacov. He's asking for a card. Ball driven into no man's land. Michigan will take that. They need a breather. Right now is when Shaka Daly is saying, manage the game. Breathe. Take your time. Just think, they come back, come out here today, having played a full match yesterday against Rutgers with a 2-1 decision. Playing a team they played a week ago where they lost in overtime 3-2. And Michigan has broken this game down to the point where they had one 45-minute performance, a second 45-minute performance. Their draw, they're tied 2-2 against the number one team in the country, and they're about to make this game all about two 10-minute periods. It's fascinating. It really is. Maryland 15-0-2, Michigan 4-10-4. Now let me throw a little love out to Bob Warming to the Penn State Nittany Lions because his team did this to Columbus, to Ohio State last year in the one versus the lower bracket game. Eric Williamson putting some pressure on. Still time here, 55 seconds left. Rosansky, Rosansky looking for an opportunity off the post. Are you kidding me? Deflected again. That's twice now off the post for Maryland. What a shot from Rosansky with limited space. Cornelli's going to come forward now. So with those numbers forward, Michigan can counter. And Atua Henny is in. Atua Henny held up there by Suli Danka. They're playing into space. And Atua Henny held up again. And they'll call the foul, though, on Atua Henny. The post, the best friend of the Michigan Wolverines. Left post and right. Here's another shot from distance. And we'll count it down. And just like last weekend in Arbor, look at this shot from Rosansky. Unbelievable. Rosansky goes near post. He's got Laurel beat, but I think Laurel's done a nice job there in that sequence to keep the near post cover. No, he might have gotten beat. That shot is wicked as it comes in. And Loro's back was, he was holding the right side of his lower back when he got up after making that dive. Wow, so Evan Laurel down. If he can't go, Braden, that'll be a story. Yeah, Braden Horton is the reserve keeper who's got his gear off now off the bench. And he's gonna start to find his gloves. We'll come back and get you updated on Evan Laurel, and we'll bring you overtime soccer. The Michigan State Spartans await the winner of this one, but it'll be as well. So Evan Laurel is out, and in comes the transfer from Pittsburgh, Braden Horton. And Braden Horton actually played high school and club ball with current Wolverine Lars Eckenrode, who was instrumental in him coming to Michigan.
He played 90 minutes this year, Chris, but he picked up four balls out of the back of the net in a 4-0 loss to William and Mary. And now he's in here with the Michigan Wolverines trying to keep their season alive. How do you like Dim Apples? I was going to say, a slightly bigger stage, I think, than the game against William and Mary. National television, a 2-2 draw over time against the number one team in the country. But this is why you train every day. Campbell. You score, you win, and you head to Indianapolis for the semifinals next Friday in the Big Ten men's soccer tournament. Samuels inside the 18. Callahan chasing Campbell. Now Cody Albrecht. And now Rosansky, who just absolutely fired one off the left post. It got by Laurel, and that's how Laurel got hurt, as we just showed you. Here's Rosansky again with Robbie Mertz trying to stand him up. Serta to Hallahan. Right now, it's just Hallahan and Atua Henny in six white jerseys. Billy Stevens will join in. Hallahan now. Atua Henny is inside the 18. Hallahan slipping. Likes it on his left one. Bounce the right to Cody Niedermeyer. Good build up for Michigan. Not sure that Hallahan was actually shooting on goal in so much as he was trying to find a two on the run in and behind. Well done, Sneaky. Well done, Sneaky. Yeah. Let him do it. Yes. No foul, no foul, no foul. Go on. Okay, take a breather. Told you about the new goalie, Braden Horton. Redshirt junior, transfer from Pitt, played high school and club with Lars Eckenrow. Here's what happens. Horton is fresh. He's been watching this game, dying for time, right? So he gets in. The defenders, especially Eckenrode, since he knows him, the defenders know, certainly know how to play with him. Williamson could be the first one to test him. But before he can, it was Eckenrode who came up big. Now Wild. Wild can get to it. But the Michigan defenders are going to be really buttoned up. I mean, this is like a little extra attention to detail now because they don't want Horton to feel like he's going to get tested. He may get tested right here, though. Inside the 18. Reeves, a back across. No white jersey there, though. And Robbie Mertz will clear it. Pretty fantastic game here today, Chris. It's been exceptional. The game we saw last week, I think, was the game of the weekend as well, based on some of the results and some of the highlights I saw. So I felt like we've been fortunate to have these two squads matched up two weeks in a row. That last opportunity, Eckenrode was fortunate. It was one of the first time he missed time. And here's a Tua Henny. And Suli Denka, because of a Tua Henny speed, just has to knock it out of bounds. And let's see Michigan take their time here. Six minutes left in overtime. Michigan completely spent double overtime last week, almost all of the 110 minutes. 90 minutes yesterday in the win over Rutgers. That game played at 1 o'clock. And now we're in overtime here today. That's a lot of soccer. And here's some speed now, Reeves. That's perfect for Horton. That is perfect for Horton. Because he's getting confidence. This is his first touch on the ball. He's getting confidence. Maryland does not want to build up Horton's confidence. Robbie Mertz. Atua Henny is in the 18. Mertz near the end line. Would love to earn a corner kick, but he doesn't. He'll dribble it out of bounds. And he'll come back to the Terps with just about five minutes remaining here in the first overtime. Mertz is down.
towards the goal line. Looks like he's collapses on his left ankle and doesn't feel like he can uh, spring back up at this moment. Yeah, he tried to get up, went back down, and now the Michigan training staff will make their way out to Robbie Mertz. Not a bad idea just to stay down a little bit as Michigan has been under some high pressure, to say the least, from Maryland. I got to give uh, both teams a lot of credit. Michigan responding to the way Maryland opened the game up a bit in the middle of the second half and able to keep pace with them. The rotation on the subs for Shaka Daly has been, I think, very strong. Putting the fresh bodies in at the right spots, and he's getting some heroic performances from some guys tonight, too. Break down the overtime rules. Pretty basic, though. If you score in either of these tens, you win it. If not, we'll go to PKs. Yeah, that's a little different than the regular season because we need a winner tonight. So trying to fill in that fourth spot in the semifinals of the Big Ten Tournament on Friday at Grand Park, just north of Indianapolis. Maryland with 12 shots, Michigan with four. Maryland's had five of those shots on goal. They've hit the left post. They've hit the right post. Michigan with two shots on goal. And guess where they've been? back of the net. You got it. O'Nally. Good position this time on a Tua Henny. Now Hallahan with a back heel to Anderson. And Hallahan again. Hallahan. If he can get it back to his left, he hits it with his right. That's too strong for Marcelo Borges, who isn't quite 100% just yet. Hallahan with a brilliant goal this year against Smiley Bob Warming in the Penn State Nittany Lions. This will fall to Wild. Cleaned up, though, by Riley Woods. Because of the injury to Borges, who's in there now, Woods has been back at left back. Flag is up. Wow. He didn't exactly put it up immediately. And look at Niedermeyer just making sure that turns around and stares down at Tua Henny after making the save just for good measure. I just kind of like it that Tua Henny took that shot, but I, Harris was, Harris knew that he had a runner on the far side. Hallahan, I'm sorry, knew he had a runner on the far side. He went right after Tua Henny, and Francis began his run too soon. Nason is desperate to find a Tua Henny there. If a Tua Henny can turn in space, you see the overtime record's been a tough one for Michigan. Of course, Maryland has not lost a game this season, folks. Cronally, Eckenrode, missed clearance, tired legs. Remember that he has played so fantastic as well. Yeah, and you have to wonder if maybe Horton probably could have come out on the hop and picked that ball up instead of putting Eckenrode in that position. Gordon Wild serves such a great ball with that left foot. Cronally is in. Cronally. Was far post. Albrick was there. First ball cleared. One back by Adui Atsum. Adui Atsum cuts it back. A tackle and a whistle going the other way. Sasho was looking for a penalty. The head coach of Maryland has Adui Atsum and Atua Henny going at it. First ball cleared out. And Atua Henny doing the work against Adui Yatsen. This is a great speed matchup, great athletic matchup, and these guys know each other pretty well, having dealt with a lot of time last weekend 
1v1 situations. Abby Okalaja got that one right. Well, yeah, and he's in the right spot, too. With all due respect, Sasha can, can call for whatever he wants to call for, but half the success of a great referee is that you're in a spot to make a decision. Whether you're right or wrong, you're selling, you're selling your call by being in the right spot. Veteran referee, grew up in Chicago. From Nigeria. Spent some time in an airport listening to some of the stories that Abby can tell from what players say on the field. After I've watched the game and I have one perspective, he's watched the game from the middle and he has a far different perspective on how the players react to his whistles. Yeah, where's well, your tape recorder when you need it, right? Yeah, exactly. How about this young man, Raiden Horton? Played 90 minutes against William Mary, a 4 0 loss. Do you have to look like a running back to be a goalkeeper at Michigan <laughs> <laughs> between him and Evan Laurel? Yeah, totally different, though, from Adam Grinwis, right? The acrobatic right. goalkeeper. This guy's got some pipes, some pythons for arms. And so 100 minutes, not enough. That wasn't enough last week, and it's not enough here. Heroic performance for the Wolverines so far. Sasho has got a lot of answers off his bench and in his starting 11. A lot of special sauce in the Terrapin lineup. It just, uh, it's being tested tonight by the Michigan Wolverines. Let's take a look at the 2016 Big Ten Men's Soccer Tournament bracket. The semifinals for the first time ever will be next Friday at Grand Park in Indianapolis. And already in your two, three, and four seeds. Todd Yeagley's Indiana Hoosiers will face John Trask in Wisconsin. And Damon Renting, he's watching the game right now. You know it, along with the Spartans. Waiting to see who they'll play. Well, that'll be interesting. John Trask, of course, played at Indiana and was a, an assistant coach there with Jerry Yeagley. So Wisconsin and Indiana meeting just north of Indianapolis. What a shot coming right here from our Big Ten Network crew. Look at the emotion coming from Sasso Soroski. Last week, these two teams went to overtime. Chris Doran, what a thriller in Ann Arbor. And that was a segment in game two. First half, it was a 2-0 game in favor of the Michigan Wolverines. Second half, Gordon Wild converts a penalty kick. Now it's 2-1. We have to play a lot of soccer before we get to the 89th minute. And this opportunity is completed by Chris and Dewey Atza. A 2-2 game going into overtime in East Lansing on, C or on uh, Ann Arbor on senior day. And this is the overtime sequence. Suli Danka gets his first goal in his career at Maryland. And 3-2 the win for the number one ranked Terrapins. Suli Denka, who dates Brooke Adler of the Maryland field hockey team that went down today against the Penn State Nittany Lions as Penn State, your Big Ten tournament field hockey champs, was watching field hockey on Friday. And here he is doing what he does along with Alex Cronalli, the captain of the Maryland Terrapins. Dean, you brought this up earlier. The result of tonight's game does not impact NCAA situations for the Maryland Terrapins. Not in my estimation. I don't, I don't think that the tournament ever does. If anything, it gives them a little time of rest, which can be a positive for some teams. That's an excellent point. But I think the preference is that you at least get to the semifinals because you take your guys and say Maryland doesn't play for another two Sundays. That's two weeks off of the guys fighting one another in starters versus reserve games throughout the course of the two weeks in training. And maybe at a point, your team loses their edge with that much time off. Well, I would say seeing the fire of Sasso Swarovski a moment ago, he's got no plans of resting. As I felt like he pointed to each and every player, he may have even pointed to you and me up here as well. 
Yeah, suffice it to say, if, if Maryland doesn't get a positive result tonight, going to training may not be all that fun for the next two weeks. First minute into the second overtime, and just like that, Maryland is getting ready to get inside their 18 again. Here's Rosansky. Samuel sent over. Albrecht. This is what Albrecht did in that game in Ann Arbor. Just continue to fire balls into the 18. Deflected out of there by Stevens. Nothing left in the tank to run that down. Kelly. And Rosansky back on his right foot. Michigan will clear it, looking for a Tua Henny. It'll go off of him. Rosansky. Off the chest of Anderson. Right now, Maryland just holding it in their offensive third. Hallahan, able to turn. And they'll give it to Michigan. So Damon Rensing is watching, texting great game. Credit to Michigan for playing on no rest and hanging with the number one team in the country. It's been exciting. And there, I think in this next seven and a half minutes, there is so much pressure on Maryland right now that Michigan can, Michigan, Michigan has the advantage because there's so much pressure on the Terrapins. Danka, over to Cronalli. Campbell on the turn, and it's in. And Maryland is undefeated still. And they'll advance to play Michigan State on Friday in Indianapolis. Zach and Rode giving his former high school and club teammate to come off the bench. Only played 90 minutes all season. Talking about Braden Horton. First real shot he saw. Yeah. And he's also knows Suli Danka very well. Look at that as well. What? Not just this game, but the nearly 110 minutes last week in Ann Arbor. These two teams have gone at it and gone at it and gone at it. There's a lot of great respect between these players, between these two clubs. Evan Laurel getting hugs. The goalkeeper that was subbed out. Jake Rosansi coming over, telling Horton, good job. That's That was such a well choreographed sequence for Maryland. It probably would have taken a world-class effort from a goalkeeper to save that shot because of the way that ball whipped around from one side to the other. And the two special turns, in particular the one by George Campbell, to eventually get through the middle. A BTN standout goal coming from Maryland once again in back-to-back -back weeks. A double overtime winner. And how about George Campbell wearing the number six jersey? Rosansky does a great job on the throw in to stay near, and then they stay in possession with Cronali working it inside. George Campbell with the flick and the turn. And you're right, it's the first shot really that Horton's seen tonight, and he's not able to get his paws on it and keep it out of the goal. Gordon Wild, George Campbell. And Campbell wastes no time on the turn, knowing exactly where he is and knowing that he's got to put this on frame. A lot of combinations up top that Sasha Swarovski can use to ride out the rest of this season. A tough opponent to face. Maryland is going to be a threat in the postseason. Number one team in the country will now face Michigan State in the semifinals. Wisconsin will face Indiana. And George Campbell with his third goal of the campaign.
comes at the perfect time, but your heart breaks for Braden Horton in practice. As a youth player, he's seen that shot a million times, and maybe short of one or two, he'll make that save. A lot of pressure coming off the bench. Maryland's defense played very well. Maryland's attack was very, very good tonight. Michigan playing on a day's rest. Unbelievable the way they came out and stuck it out into overtime tonight. Teams down the road are looking at this stat. Maryland has won their last six games, but the goal differential has only been one. And of those six, they've had to go to overtime four times to seal the deal. So with the win and the goal by George Campbell, this is how the bracket looks now. Well, we talked about the Indiana-Wisconsin matchup, the history there with John Trask and Todd Yeagley, but Maryland and Michigan State should be a great one. And the times will be announced on Monday as we get set for coverage Friday beginning at noon Eastern from Grand Park in Westfield, Indiana. A neutral site for the first time selected by the Big Ten Conference. Campbell with big hugs. The crew still here. The family members still here. And they saw a thriller. The BTN standout goal from George Campbell, his third goal of the season, a big one for Maryland. A lot to celebrate here at Ludwig Field. They'll be back in a couple of weeks, no doubt about it. Shaka, Shaka Daly, Daly, he can be proud, Chris Dorn, for sure, of this Michigan Wolverine team. And they got some troops coming in next year as well. A quality recruiting class, Michigan. They'll be right back. Maryland stays right where they always are in the hunt for a national championship. Up first, though, they'll try to get a Big Ten title. We'll come back, see if we can't get our hands on that man or one of the other stars here as Maryland moving on. They're in the semis of the Big Ten tournament. Next week in India, 3-2 win over Michigan.